One thing I have always been pretty terrible at is jumping. Even when I was young and played basketball with most of my free time, at my best, I could only reach a couple inches over the rim. Add to the fact I stopped growing when I was 5'9", and I probably should have stuck with something like soccer instead. So given that I'm the same height I was at 17, only now I'm in my 30s, no. my vertical jump has only deteriorated. Stolen by time, like my hairline before, and dreams of once owning a home. But one thing that has changed significantly since I was in high school is how much access elite NBA athletes are willing to share about their own training and workout routines. So much so that I believe I can build a far more complete vertical jump program today than anything I could have managed when I was desperately trying to learn to dunk back in high school. So to figure out where I was starting out from, I went into the studio to log my standing vertical jump on day one. We measured from the top of my standing reach to the highest point of my first three attempts, giving me a standing vertical jump of just 19 inches. If I allowed myself a short running start, I was able to boost these numbers all the way up to a 20 and a half inch vertical. And while neither of these jumps are particularly good, I wanna see how much I can improve my vertical jump if I train with an NBA inspired plyometric program for the next 60 days. To help with this goal, I purchased a plyo box with adjustable heights of 20, 24, and 30 inches. The inside is filled with PE foam, so this should be a pretty low impact platform as I get started with my training. My first workout consists of four reps doing standing box jumps at 30 inches. This is followed by four sets of seated jumps driving from my heels up and finishing things off with four sets of alternating step ups. And just these three exercises together winds up being a much more demanding workout than I was expecting. I know you have a seated jump, but it's not to another box. So a progression from that would be a, a seated box jump, you know, where you'd actually jump up onto a platform with that. This is Sean, my personal trainer through the app Copilot, and I'll talk more about them at a later point in this video. I was gonna give you feedback on your form on that one specifically. You start with your arms up and then you bring them down and then you jump up, right? But if you go back to your initial video, one where you're standing and you go down and then right back up, explode, you lost that on that seated one. So you're thinking about pulling that rubber band back, you know, uh, with all the muscles that you're loading before you explode up off the ground. Sean recommends I warm up with 10 or more sets simply practicing to load my jump, swinging my arms down and bending my knees into an athletic stance so I'm prepped and ready to explode into my jump. And then in regards to, uh, you didn't have any depth jumps in there. So depth jump is basically where you, you're standing on a box and you basically take one foot off and then you work on your landing. Talk about eccentric versus concentric strength. Uh, the better you get at landing, the higher you can jump. Because again, uh, I always use the car analogy. You could have the fastest Ferrari you, you've ever found, but if you don't have the right brakes on it, you can only go so fast. So given where I'm starting at, how much do you think I can reasonably expect to improve? I mean, it's not linear. You're not just gonna keep doubling your vertical after 60 days or 90 days and stuff. There's gonna be a point where you can't jump any higher. Uh, but I wouldn't be shocked for you to add anywhere from, you know, two to six inches, you know, depending on, you know, where you're at. After talking with Sean, I continue training with four sets of box jumps, concentrating on snapping my body down into position and landing with my feet and knees facing forward. Then it's time for four reps of depth jumps, working on absorbing contact with the ground and jumping up onto the box. I'll follow this with four reps of weighted step ups, holding 20 pound dumbbells in each hand. And while most of my workouts do involve seated box jumps, today I'm mixing it up with four sets of kneeling jumps, which I'm actually doing wrong today because my feet should be flat on the mat and instead I have them resting on my toes. I learned this after I sent a video clip back to Sean for feedback. From here, I'm going to continue with this workout or something very similar three times per week. Now that my training plan is built and I'm beginning to settle into the new routine, I want to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Copilot. I started working with Copilot over six months ago when I began work on my body recomposition goal. And it was through working with Copilot that I was able to see the best results I've ever achieved with one of my goals. That's because Copilot gives you one-on-one -on -one coaching with an actual trainer. And this is so valuable for two specific reasons, in my opinion. One is because when it comes to setting and achieving fitness goals, it's just as important to train smart as it is to train hard. And Copilot trainers have a wide range of expertise that can help you in areas of nutrition to sports science, all of which is going to play a crucial role in helping you reach the personal goals you're working toward. 
The second reason I find working with Copilot to be so beneficial is because your personal trainer is also an accountability partner. So every time you do a workout, your Apple Watch is tracking your reps, pace, range of motion, and your rest times. So if you skip a bunch of workouts in the week or just stop mid-session to play Candy Crush, all that data goes to your trainer. And sure, they're not gonna call you up and scold you. They're all really nice and supportive people. But when I've made it to the last two workouts of the week and I don't wanna do them, knowing I'm on this journey with someone else really gives me that extra push to finish strong. If you go to the link in our description, you can sign up to get a 14-day free trial with Copilot to see if their one-on-one -on -one training approach works for you and you'll get 30% off their membership price. That means you'll have a personal trainer to work with for just $69 per month. That is an incredible rate that is yours to keep forever. You just have to sign up through the link below. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Copilot. Now, back to my jumping. Today, I'm trying to get in a bit of cross training, working on some areas of my lower body that I haven't put as much focus into. So it's a lot of ankle stabilizing drills, a lot of agility work, some backwards running, high knee skipping, trying to focus in on a lot of the areas of my lower body that I haven't been paying as much attention to so I don't become too strong in some areas and too weak in others where I'm setting myself up for a potential injury. So hopefully a lot of the exercise I'm doing today will help with that. In addition to my plyometric training, I'm incorporating two days of lower body weightlifting with sumo goblet squats, kettlebell squats with an assistance band, Bulgarian split squats, and glute raises. I'm also doing about three days of lighter upper body work, which takes my total to five days of strength training and three days of plyometrics. Unfortunately, even with the cross training work I've added to my workouts to try and strengthen all the supporting muscles, I am starting to feel a really sharp pain in the front of my knees whenever I am doing my lower body workouts or my plyometric drills. I have tried icing my knees and elevating them at the end of my sessions. However, the pain is persisting and given how important your knees are for any success on a vertical jump goal, this is kind of spooking me out a bit. So I've made an appointment with Ian Peary at Range Physiotherapy to go in and try and figure out what it is that's causing the sudden spike in pain. So this might be a bit tender. Yeah, <laughs> tender, right? And so when I palpate in through here, this again, pain pressure threshold is telling us like, okay, what's the state of the muscles? When it's this sensitive and sore, it's, it's telling us that there's some stuff going on. So you have your, your quadricep muscle, four muscles that will run down into the patella. Then you have your patellar tendon that comes down here. And this little bit is the tibial tuberosity and that's what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So this is where the tendon attaches right here. And it's gonna start to load and shear the way that you're doing these depth jumps. If you were to, Look at your training age for this task. You're basically in your infancy of, of trying to get to max vertical jump. Because you're trying to do it in eight weeks time, the differences between joints isn't gonna matter as much as how well you, you know, periodize your training program, look at your load, look at your time off between sessions and build up progressively. If it's been a rapid increase, you're just gonna get hurt no matter what the case is. The good news for my session with Ian is I have pretty good range of motion through my lower body and I am not injured which is all great. The downside is my knees are taking a big toll with how much I have scaled up my lower body training and I need to take some time off or at least reduce the intensity of my training if I want that pain to go away. So this is kind of a pretty heavy blow as I have just two weeks left to go with my goal and I have to scale back the amount of work I'm gonna be doing. After taking three days for rest, I'm working with Sean to go through a deload week of light mobility drills and modest weight training to help my knees feel better. And with this added recovery time worked into my routine, I'm actually feeling pretty much back to 100% as I go into week eight. I've even started increasing the height of my box jumps by setting the plyo box on an elevated surface with my highest box jump now coming in at 38 inches. The only question left is how much any of this will carry over to my standing vertical jump. 
Okay, so it is the last day of this challenge. I am feeling really nervous actually for this one, mainly because I have put in a lot of work in the past trying to improve my vertical jump and just haven't seen any success. So I am really worried today is gonna be a lot like that. I have taped onto the wall my markers from day one, my 19 inch standing vert, and my 20 and a half inch jump when I gave myself a bit of a running start. So I'm going to do some thorough foam rolling, some warm up work to try and activate all my muscles, get everything loose, get everything ready, and try to end this with a good vertical jump. I warm up with 20 minutes of light activity, so my muscles are primed and ready for the final test. It actually feels really high up. It's pretty high, dude. Maybe I'm just short. Full palm, full palm. That was better. That was good. I don't know how much better, but that was definitely better. That was good. What's a running start getting me? Oh, oh, let's go. My standing vertical jump improved by just under three inches from where I was on day one. But when I compared my running jump off two feet to where I was 60 days ago, I actually jumped four and a half inches higher. Even though nearly all my training was built around my standing vertical jump, and I didn't do any work to improve my technique on things like my panoptimal step, which is a step where you load your jump before takeoff, my running jump off two feet improved just enough for me to touch the rim on the courts by my home, which was honestly such a satisfying feeling. I can't remember last time I did that. From here, I would love to see how much more I can improve if I continue with plyometric training, expanding it to single leg jump training, maybe learning how to improve my panoptimal step, and of course, actually getting back to lower body training at the gym, I think will help immensely as I go forward with my jump training. So I wanna say a big thank you to Sean from Copilot for training me on this goal. His advice for this process was so helpful in building my training routine, and thank you to Ian for helping to fix the pain I was feeling through my knees. I would not have gotten the results I got if I were just attempting this goal by myself. If you have any suggestions on how I should keep training or exercises I should add to my workouts, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching.